Well, hey, good morning. Welcome back to our shop just outside of Kennesaw here in North Georgia. Well, today's project is going to be another Acclaim tent. And here's our project for the next day or so. It's a Lane Acclaim. cocktail table. It's round. It's about 38 inches in diameter designed to go in the center of your floor. And it, you know, at first glance it looks great, but uh, unfortunately it was refinished uh, fairly poorly, apparently with a, uh, a brush and some polyurethane. And it's going to be very difficult for the camera to pick it up. But you can see there's all sorts of inclusions in the finish. And then all over the table are marks like these which are swirl marks from a bad sanding job with an oscillating sander. So the top has to be completely stripped off and refinished. The second issue here is a number of chips on this piece of banding veneer that goes around the table. It's, uh, it's stained in the same walnut color as the legs, but it uh, appears to be ash by the grain pattern. And in preparation for the repairs, I've sanded the area so I know what kind of color that I want to shoot for. I've cleaned out the area that we're going to fill, and basically I just took a little old dull knife and went through here and scraped this out. And this is what I'm the product I'm going to be using, which is Mohawk's epoxy putty stick. This is a two-part epoxy. You just slice off a a little piece, mix it up. You got three to five minutes open time. I think it cures in about ten and it's ridiculously strong once it cures up. All I do is take a mixed up epoxy and force it into the depression and get it in there tight. Now you want a really good adhesion. And you can see with my finger as I push real hard it's going to push it in but we're not going to be level across. So what I like to do is after I've got it in there real tight, I just put a fat layer on top of it and then using, in this case we'll use a, a credit card and some, and some water. You can use your finger, you can use a scraper, you can use whatever you want, but just take it and across here and this is of course going to give us the curvature that we need and we'll work off any excess so the less we have on there the less sanding we're going to have to do and there we go and here we are in the underside it's got the lane burn-in manufacturing mark, the design patent number which is 185372, the style number which is 0900-03 and you can look up exactly what this table is and then the serial number which reads 267210 and as you know if you read it backwards it's 01 for January 1st 27th day of 1962 so that's when this thing came off the line January 27th, 1962. And you can see now just how loose the legs are. We've got to pull them out, and you know how we do that. We use the heat gun. We'll shoot some uh, heat down in the corner. Not so much that we're going to bubble this finish, but just enough to warm up the glue. And then we lift straight up, do a little wiggling, pop it up. Because I have uh, <laughs> no ability to remember anything past five minutes ago, I always mark everything. So this is hole number four for leg number four and in case this stretcher pops off we know how to put the stretcher on. I got the holes cleaned out and I lined up all of the dowels with the holes and they all appear to be very tight and I believe in my judgment that we're going to be okay with yellow glue, so that's what I'm going to use. We would not be wrong to put epoxy in there, but again, the epoxy is going to make any future disassembly nearly impossible.
Okay, I've got full coverage in the hole. Very little puddling. That's what I was pulling that extra glue out for. And then up here on the tenon, we have full coverage on the tenon, full coverage on the shoulders. We have the shoulders down here as well. And if you look over here, there's a spot right there we missed. We don't want any orphans. So we're ready to go. This is where those numbers come in real, real handy. There's no question about how it goes back together. start to finish this is that this top has seen an oscillating sander already so remembering that it's veneer and veneer is thin we may not have a whole lot of veneer left on this top to play with so we're definitely going to do whatever sanding that needs to be done by hand and this is how we'll clamp it up what I do is just lay a blanket on top of the table get the legs nice and flat on the floor Put my 19th century anvil on top of that and let the glue dry. Good morning. The legs are all tight. That problem's been taken care of. We're moving on to stripping. I use a commercial methylene chloride stripper, a brush. I put it on when it bubbles up. I use this uh, plastic shovel to scrape it off with. I finish up with uh, steel wool and some lacquer thinner. And eventually when it's all the finish is off, then I'll do a light rinse with water, dry it, and let it dry, and then we move on to, to sanding. And 15 minutes later, she's all stripped off. Take a look, see? Condition is, uh, under the finish is really very, very good. We've got a couple of, a couple of little dings here that we're going to probably want to fill. If I can find me right there. We'll fill those in before we finish it. And whenever I'm getting ready to uh, start to refinish, I always double check my work to make sure I didn't miss anything. And I'm hoping you all can see in the camera. Let me see if I can. There we go. Block the glare for you. You can see that squiggle. That's from the power sander, and that's down into the uh, the walnut. So what I'll do is spend a little time sanding that. Well, those scratches in the tabletop from the prior sanding were deeper than I anticipated and I just could not get them out with hand sanding so with uh, no sense of trepidation I power sanded this table off and while I was doing it I took the opportunity to remove an awful lot of that black wiping stain that was inside the grain and it lightened the, uh, the table up considerably. Interesting uh, point. I had uh, always believed these to be solid ash pieces. At least they always were on the other acclaimed tables that I've dealt with. Perhaps because this one is circular, you can see here that in fact it is not solid. And I have a uh, of an air burn through that I'm going to have to deal with with some color here. Uh, that was a rather unpleasant surprise. But as far as the veneer on the main part of the table, it was uh, thick enough that I was able to sand it off. I got all those ugly swirl marks off. I got all the old black uh, walnut wiping stain off. So it's going to look much, much better now. I'm going to deal with that uh, with this. What I'll do is I'll just apply some color with my... Uh, well, I'll show you when I do it. Okay, uh, full disclosure, this is not my strong suit. I don't see colors as well as I probably should. But the first thing you want to look for is the lightest background color, which in this case is almost white. And what I'm going to do is apply a little uh, blend all color. This is in white, right to here. And it's on my on my rag, so I get uh, a random color as I put it down and it's always easier to go lighter to start lighter than it is to go darker you know, always always err on the side of light And 
and I'm using a uh, an old dishcloth here and it probably isn't the best I probably should go with some kind of a a cotton cross weave cloth it's a little smoother okay we put a very light mist coat of lacquer on there to seal it in and when it dries we'll come up with a second color which to me looks like probably a very pale yellow and I've got a little bit of raw sienna which is a yellow color on my finger I'm just tapping that in we have just a little bit left little tackiness to the to the lacquer and already you can see that we're getting a gentle glare. We're starting to get that colored in. And now maybe just a tad touch of brown. Got some raw umber here. And again, we're just touching these in. Kind of gives us that random appearance which is what makes it blend in. I'm not sure what you can see from through the light through the camera but you can see we've made an awful lot of progress already to conceal that. And I think we just need a little bit more a little bit a few more wisps of brown to tone down some of the white as it blends in. And then we'll come through and carry some of the grain over top of it. You always want to be careful when you're using those darker colors because they can get away from you in a hurry. But that's, uh, that's looking pretty good already. So I'm going to seal that in with a light mist coat of lacquer. And then we'll look at uh, what we need to do to make it even better. And my last step here is just to take this black wax pencil and very lightly continue the grain lines across our repair. You know, it's very subtle stuff, but it makes all the difference in the world when you're trying to conceal something like this. And fortunately here we have lots of very wispy grain lines that we can pull right across there. So, hey, from burn through to that, I'll take it. And we use the same technique uh, to repair or to conceal the repairs that we made with the, with the epoxy. There was one there. And then, believe it or not, I found one that was done in a dark walnut. And those are here now. Those, those have been concealed. So that was actually black when we started. But that's a technique I use. Uh, like I say, there's guys that are really, really good at it. I'm not one of them. But we are actually now at the point where I'm feeling comfortable that we can seal this up. Good morning. Got our second coat of sealer on last night, and when it dried, I got everything sanded down, and it's now ready for some color. As you know, I normally apply color to these acclaim tables by using a uh, spray-on toner that I make. I believe that they look best with a light coat of uh, a medium walnut on them. I never apply a wiping stain because, as you can see, what's happened here is when you do, the wiping stain penetrates the grain of the ash, and I think it looks terrible. It looks almost black, and we still have spots over there that I just couldn't get out. But what I do when I mix my toner, as I've talked about before, is I add a little bit of acetone-based dye. This is medium brown walnut by Mohawk. I add a lot of lacquer thinner and a little bit of lacquer. The lacquer provides a little bit of stick to it. The lacquer thinner flashes off quickly, leaving behind an even coat of the dye. Uh, I shoot it on with my, with my spray gun, and here is a mixing stick, and you can see it's really not very, very dark at all. And then I shoot it by eye, and we see, uh, we see what it looks like. So let me get you set up, and I'll shoot some color on this.
we got our first coat of lacquer on it, and that's what she's looking like. So I'll let that set up, and we'll come in and take a look, see what the color looks like. If we need to adjust it, we will. If not, we'll probably just sand that down and shoot a second coat of lacquer on it, and that'll probably finish her off. And here she is, all done. That last lacquer coat is still wet, but you get the point. Earlier this morning, I took care of the legs and repainted the leg tips and then used a little scratch cover underneath to get rid of all the marks on the legs and I cleaned up the underside. So, there we are. I'm very happy with the way it came out. And I hope somebody enjoys this. So listen, from our shop just outside of Kennesaw here in North Georgia, thanks for watching, best regards, take good care, we'll see you next video.